Ooh, how are we doing? Good. Um, let's see. I am not from LA originally. I am from Denver, Colorado. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm from Colorado. Uh, I don't ski though, so you know, don't accuse me of that. Uh, in fact, uh, in fact, no one in my family skis, which is a bit of a, a cardinal sin in Colorado. You know, it's like they say, a, a Colorado family that's happy not skiing is like a Catholic family that's happy. <laughs> I, mean, I can say that, I have, I have, I have some Catholic friends. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm from Colorado originally, I moved to LA and the about two years ago, and the second month that I moved here, I got carjacked at knife point. Damn. Welcome. Welcome to LA. Now to be fair, it was um, alleged knife point, right? Like the guy pulled me out of my car, told me he had a knife, and I wasn't like, prove it. Um, <laughs> I trusted him on that. Be fun, nothing else. Um, uh, listen, uh, getting carjacked when you first moved to a city, obviously not fun, right? But uh, I think I learned a thing or two. Um, I learned, for example, that friends are often much worse at consoling you after a traumatic event than maybe they think that they are, right? I had a couple friends who reacted in basically the same way, which is to be like, oh, you got carjacked at knife point, but th that seems so rare. <laughs> and that was it. Which is a terrible way of consoling someone. That's sort of like telling someone who's been diagnosed with a rare disease just simply the fact that it's a rare disease. Like, hey man, if it helps, you're my only friend with Lou Gehrig's disease. <laughs> you, you did it. Um, apologies to anyone in the audience who has Lou Gehrig's disease. Um, although, statistically speaking, there's probably none of you. Um, which I guess is my point. Um, but, uh, well, it's obviously the best person at consoling me after this uh, traumatic event was my mother. Give it up for moms. Love moms. Uh, my mom gave me a call after I got carjacked. And just for, first, for a little bit of necessary background about the car in question, it didn't have a back bumper on it, per se. Okay, um, so she called me and she was like, hey Sam, you know, this is really um, terrible that this all happened to you, but, um, well, I've been telling you you needed to replace that back bumper, and I just think your car would have been less of a target <laughs> if it had uh, had that back bumper on it. <laughs> so I think my mom slut-shamed my car. <laughs> I think what happened then, well, you know, I'm not saying your car was asking for it, but uh, I'm not not saying that, okay? Waving its car bits out in the back for the world to see like a common harlot. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I'm making it sound like my mom's like from the Midwest. She's from Boston. Um, so, I, so actually a more accurate rendition of that phone call was she, she called me up and she was like, Sam, I just want you to know all this that happened to you. Um, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. He knows what's going on. Guys, that's a reference to the 1997 Academy Award winning film Good Will Hunting, written by Matt Damon and, sure, maybe Ben Affleck. Um, it refers in particular to a scene in which the late great Robin Williams is telling Matt Damon that the horrific abuse that he suffered at the hands of his foster parents as a kid is not his fault. I'm using it, of course, to complain about my car getting stolen because I've lived a life of relatively little hardship. Um, I do like them apples. Um, that too was a reference to the 1997 Academy Award on Good Ill. Oh, okay, that's enough of that. We don't know about that. Um, I will let you guys know, um, this car that got stolen from me, uh, they did find it the following day, the LAPD. Um, they gave me a call and they were like, we found your car. It's completely totaled and wrecked. Uh, and uh, I went to the impound lot and I want you guys to pay very close attention to the contents of my wrecked stolen car, okay? Everything that was in the glove compartment was thrown into the back seat. Everything that was in the center console was thrown into the back seat. In the cup holders were four unopened packs of cigarettes. And on the passenger side seat was a styrofoam IHOP plate, atop which sat one half-eaten pancake. <laughs> he stole my car to go get pancakes. <laughs> that is punk rock, honestly. Like, mad respect for that. Here, the, the following, okay, is a rendition of how I believe this gentleman's night must have gone after he stole my car. 
This is a fictional account, um, but based on evidence. <laughs> He's walking around, you know, thinking, damn it, I could really use some pancakes. <laughs> Sees me, thinks, bingo, steals my car, starts driving, thinks, hmm, perhaps there are pancakes in the glove compartment. No, no! <laughs> perhaps there are glove pan pancakes in the center console. No, no! I'm so stressed, I could really use some cigarettes. Goes to the 7-Eleven, goes up, says, cigarettes, please. They say one pack. He says, ha ha, no, four packs of cigarettes, please. Gets back in the car, and just as he's about to crack them open, he thinks, wait, 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 you're on a mission. Pancakes first, cigarettes later. Surely nothing will intervene in the meantime. Keeps driving, finally sees at the Blue Beacon on the rise, the International House of Pancakes. He goes in, says, pancakes, please. They say, how many? He says, Ah, one gets the pancakes, gets back in the car, starts eating, driving, eating, driving at the same time, living his best life. Finally, sees the sirens, hears the sirens, sees the flashing lights in the back, thinks, fuck it, I'm going out my way. Careens into a minivan, and just as the police are telling him to get out of his car, he says, wait! And he takes the half eaten pancake and gingerly places it. <laughs> on the passenger side seat. It says, whoever's car this is, I want them to know. And that, I think, would be an awesome IHOP commercial. The International House of Pancakes. Fuck the police. Yeah. All right, that's my time. Thank you so much. I'm Sam Clark. Stay out there.